Welcome to part 2 of the lecture on automatic parallelization. So, in this lecture we will continue our discussion on data dependences, direction vectors and look at a couple of uh, examples of vectorization, concurrentization etcetera etcetera. So, to do a bit of recap we know that there are three types of uh, dependences S 1 and S 2 are two statements and uh, if the definition of x is used here without any modification it is a flow dependence. If the usage happens before the definition then it is anti dependence and if there are two definitions then it is output dependence. The data dependence direction vector is actually an additional uh, information attached to the dependence itself. So, there is one direction vector component for each loop in a nest of loops. So, if there is a three nested loop then we have one for each of these three. The dependence uh, data dependence direction vector is a d uh, you know long vector where d is the nest, uh, depth of nesting and each of these components can be less than equal to or greater than then the others less than or equal to greater than or equal to not equal to and star are actually derived from the principal uh, components less than equal to and greater than. The less than direction means it is a forward direction implying uh, some quantity is computed in iteration i and used in a later iteration i plus k. Whereas, uh, this is the this is a very common type of uh, direction dip, uh, you know, uh, vector component direct backward or greater than direction means that the dependence is from i to i minus k. In other words computed in iteration i and used in iteration i minus k. It this does not look possible of course, in uh, single loops it is not at all possible, but in doubly nested loops or higher level loop nesting it is possible. I am going to give you examples of this later. The equal to direction vector says the dependence is in the same iteration. So, computed in iteration i and used in iteration i. So, we saw this example last time. So, this is uh, you know x j equal to x j plus c. So, the value of j is the same in the same iteration we actually use it first and then uh, define it. So, it is a delta with equal to whereas, this is x j plus 1 equal to x j. So, we compute first and then use it later in a different iteration. So, this is s delta less than s this is x j equal to x j plus 1 plus c. So, we use first and then compute. So, this is an anti dependence with a less than direction vector and this loop is running downwards x j equal to x j plus 1 plus c. So, you can see that x 99 is used here x 98 will be used later and so on. So, this is still a delta less than type of uh, relation and the last one is uh, x j equal to x j minus 1 plus c. So, again we use uh, you know we compute first and uh, use later. So, this is again a delta less than relation. This is a, a different example with uh, two levels of uh, nesting. So, i and j are the two loops. So, we have a i j equal to b i j plus c i j and we also have s 2 which is b of i comma j plus 1 equal to a of i comma j and b of i comma j. So, we have this is the expanded version of the two loops. So, for i equal to 1 let us say we have uh, j equal to 1 then you know expanding s 1 we get a 1 1 equal to b 1 1 plus c 1 and uh, expanding s 2 we get uh, b 1 2 equal to a 1 1 plus b 1 1. So, there is a flow dependence from this to this and obviously, the iteration uh, is the same I, I iteration is the same and the j iteration is also the same. So, s 1 delta s 2 with both the directions being equal to. So, that is because of uh, this ok. Then if you consider j equal to 1 and j equal to 2 b 1 2 is uh, defined here in j equal to 1 and used in j equal to 2, but the value of i is the same. So, this is again a flow different you know uh, flow dependence 
and uh, computed in an earlier iteration and used in a later iteration. So, the first i loop has equal to direction vector and the second loop uh, has less than direction vector and it is a flow dependence uh, you know from uh, S 2 to S 1. Then we have uh, B 1 3 here this is S 2 again and uh, it is used in you know j equal to 3 b 1 3 here. So, you can look at b 1 2 here and b 1 2 here as well. So, this is again a flow dependence and uh, similar in type, but only thing is this is between S 2 and S 2 okay, defined in an earlier j i value of S 2 and used in a later j i value of S 2. So, this is from S 2 to S 2 dependence is delta and the first component is equal to and the second component is less than. So, this is the uh, direction vector in this example and the dependence uh, diagram is also here. So, we actually place the same dependences here from S 1 to S 2 there is delta equal to equal to. So, that is 1 and then there is 1 from S 2 to S 2 that is nothing but equal to and less than with the delta and the third one is from S 2 to S 1 which is equal to and less than. So, these are the three dependences that we have along with their direction vectors. So, this is a the third example of uh, direction vector again we have uh, two loops here in both these examples and uh, this is supposed to show the direction vector less than and greater than as I said greater than direction vector says computed uh, you know in a later iteration, but used in an earlier iteration. So, it does not seem to make sense, but it does when we consider doubly nested loops. So, we have S 1 as a i plus 1 comma j equal to and S 2 as equal to a i comma j plus 1. Let us expand the loops with i equal to 1 and uh, j equal to 2 we have S 1 as a 2 2. So, that is uh, this part. Okay. And if we take i equal to 2 and j equal to 1, then S 2 will be again equal to of uh, a to 2. So, that is uh, i equal to 2 and j equal to 1. So, clearly there is a dependence from S 1 to S 2, a to 2 is being computed here and a to 2 is being used here. So, this is a flow dependence. So, that is a delta all right S 1 to S 2 there is a delta. What about the data dependence direction vector? So, the value of i from here to here has increased. So, we compute in a lower iteration number and use in a higher iteration number. So, the uh, direction vector for i is less than and for j we compute in a higher iteration number j equal to 2 and use in a lower iteration number j equal to 1. So, the second component is greater than there is no trick here it is just that the value of i is different in these two. So, the j loop starts running afresh for every value of i. So, in the iterations of j corresponding to i equal to 1 we define a to 2 at j equal to 2, but then once we go to the next of i j starts running again and that is why we have the value a to 2 here. So, we are really using the uh, you know value of uh, a to 2 in a lower iteration number, but uh, definitely in a different iteration of i. So, there is uh, you know this is quite realistic. Okay. Then the second example S 2 less than greater than delta less than greater than S 1 we have the i loop and the j loop. Here we have a i j plus 1 and on the right side S 2 we have a i plus 1 comma j. So, again we expand i equal to 1 j equal to 2. So, S 2 is uh, a to 2 equal to and i equal to 2 and j equal to 1 S 1 becomes uh, equal to a to 2. So, again there is a, a you know uh, flow dependence from here to here this is uh, i value increases. So, the dependence is direction vector is less than for i the j value reduces. So, it is a greater than for S 1 for uh, you know uh, second component. Okay. 
So, uh, all types of dependences are possible and I have given you examples of this. So, let us look at uh, one more example. So, here we have two nested loop for i and j and then inside j we have uh, two independent loops one for k and another for l. So, the only dependence from this to this is that uh, x is defined here and uh, x is used here. But apart from that because of i and j you know the there are other dependences as well. So, let us expand the loop with i equal to 1, a equal to 2 then 3 values of j, j equal to 1, 2 and 3. So, with i equal to 1 and j equal to 1 we have uh, x 1, 2 and uh, yeah, sorry i equal to 1 and j equal to 1 we have x i j plus 1 and k. I have not expanded k because k is an independent loop here and here you know l is another independent loop here. So, we are only looking at the uh, you know um, dependences corresponding to direction vectors for i and j plus 1. So, a suitable value of k here can always be placed you know k and l I can just place uh, one here and one here there is no problem. So, uh, x 1 2 k is defined here and then in the same value of i and uh, with a different value of j x 1 2 l. So, I can place this make this uh, one here and one here. So, that establishes a concrete dependence between the two. So, that is shown here similarly between x 1 3 k here and x 1 3 l here there is a dependence I can place k equal to a suitable value and l equal to suitable value here right to make them the same. Now, for the second statement we have a 2 1 l here which is used in a different value of i. So, a 2 1 k. So, k and l can be equalized again. The a 2 2 l is defined here and a 2 2 k is uh, used here. So, this is another uh, uh, you know instance of the same dependence. So, in the first case it was a uh, flow dependence. So, there is delta and in the second case also it is a flow dependence. So, it is uh, again delta. In the first case the first direction vector component is marked as equal to because it is the same value of i for both these. Okay. So, this is the same column whereas, here we have marked the first component as less than because there is a difference in the value of i from here to here this is i equal to 1 and this is i equal to 2. So, and uh, this has increased in this direction. The second component is less than here because j has increased in this direction. So, we have less than here and uh, the value of j is the same across these two. So, we have equal to as the direction vector component here. So, if we draw the dependence diagram here. So, s 1 to s 2 we have delta I, you know equal to and uh, less than. So, that is this and from s 2 to s 1 we have the other one uh, delta of less than and equal to. So, you observe that this is from s 2 to s 1 whereas, this is from s 1 to s 2. So, these are the two uh, you know adjust in this uh, you know dependence diagram. So, we will see how this matters a little later. Okay. So, far we saw examples of uh, data dependence relations and uh, direction vectors. Now, it is time to understand how to use the uh, dependences in order to do vectorization and uh, uh, you know concurrentization. So, individual nodes are statements of the program and adjust depict data dependence among the statements. So, we have already seen this this is uh, how the data dependence diagram is uh, created graph is created. If the DDG is uh, acyclic then vectorization of the program is possible and is straightforward. So, remember the uh, most important condition for vectorization is that the data dependence diagram or the graph should be acyclic. The direction vector by itself does not pose a problem here, but it will definitely pose a problem for the concurrentization. So, vector code generation can be done using a very simple topological sort order on the data dependence graph. 
So, suppose the graph is cyclic then it is a bit more complicated. So, we find all the strongly connected components of the data dependence uh, graph and reduce the DDG to an acyclic graph by treating each strongly connected component as a single node. So, now the uh, you know once it has become acyclic we can actually now generate uh, vector code, but uh, as far as the SCSs are concerned they cannot be fully vectorized, but the final code will contain some sequential loops and possibly some vector code. So, that is how this is going to be this is a bit more complex and uh, it is not possible to provide a very simple example here. So, we are going to emit uh, you know uh, rather uh, not look at any example in this case, but we will concentrate our uh, attention here. Then, so in the case of uh, concurrentization, if all the dependence relations in a loop nest have a direction vector of equal to, then the iterations of the loop can be executed in parallel with no synchronization between iterations. So, remember direction vector value of equal to for a loop. So, in that particular loop if the direction vector value is equal to that means all the dependences are in the same iteration they do not flow across iterations therefore, iterations of the loop can be executed in parallel. There are a couple of observations here which are very important any dependence with a forward direction in an outer loop will be satisfied by the serial execution of the outer loop. So, if there is a less than direction in the outer loop you run it sequentially then the uh, dependence is automatically satisfied for that loop. And uh, if an outer loop is in L is run in sequential mode then the all the dependences with a forward direction at the outer loop of L will be automatically satisfied even those of the inner loop. So, uh, if we this is a very important thing if we are able to if we run the outer loop in a sequential mode then you know we can run all the inner loops uh, in a parallel mode provided uh, you know the direction vectors uh, permit ok. So, we are uh, we do not have to worry too much once we run it in sequential mode the uh, everything will be satisfied in at the inner levels. So, we can uh, run them in parallel only thing is the outer uh, must have uh, less than direction uh, you know in all the edges ok. So, if some of the edges of the data dependence diagram corresponding to the outer loop have uh, equal to direction vector then uh, you know running the outer loop in sequential mode will not satisfy all the dependences. So, that will be a problem. However, this is not true for those dependences with equal to direction at the outer level. So, I already mentioned this the dependences of the inner loops will have to be satisfied by appropriate statement ordering or and or loop execution order. So, we are going to see examples of this uh, very soon. So, let us take an example of uh, vectorization. So, here is the here is a loop i with two statements s 1 and s 2 and uh, here is the another loop with i as the index with s 3 and s 4 ok. The index of course, does not matter because these two are independent loops. Now, we have s 1, s 2, s 3 and s 4 the dependences among these statements is also shown here. Between s 1 and s 2 there is nothing in common. So, they do not have a dependence right and then x i is computed in this loop ok and then it is used in this loop. So, obviously, between s 1 and s 3 there is a flow dependence delta right. I have not bothered to indicate the direction vector ok. So, this is just uh, uh, dependence because vectorization does not bother about the direction vector. Then we have uh, used the x i here, but uh, we have also computed the x i plus 1 here. So, we compute and then use ok. So, this is uh, the way it is. So, x 2 and then x 1 x 3 and x 2 etcetera etcetera. So, what happens is from s 4 ok we would have a dependence uh, delta to s 3. So, that is also there right. 
So, this is very important and then again we have uh, value of B i being computed here and the value of B i being uh, used here. So, it is the same value of i. So, from S 2 to S 4 we again have uh, a delta dependence and between these two S 1 and S 4 there is uh, also an output dependence okay, from S 1 to S 4 that is uh, delta O. So, these are the various dependences in our program. Now, obviously, this is a directed acyclic graph there are no cycles here. So, if we do a topological sort of this graph then the statements can be vector statements can be emitted. So, now this uh, x i s 1 okay, has no incoming arcs. So, we can emit the code for uh, s 1 directly. So, x 1 to 99 equal to the vector constant 1 to 99. So, x i equal to i means x 1 equal to 1, x 2 equal to 2 etcetera. So, this is a vector constant 1, 2, 3, 4 etcetera up to 99. So, this assignment uh, is a vector statement for this loop, this part of the loop. The second statement is S 2. So, again it is very similar B i equal to 100 minus i becomes uh, 99 colon 1 colon minus 1. So, we have uh, you know uh, uh, i equal to 1. So, this starts with 99 then goes to 98, 97 etcetera. So, this vector with a stride of minus 1 automatically uh, indicates that it is uh, a vector with 99, 98, 97 etcetera etcetera. So, this is S 2. So, these two do not have any incoming edges. So, these can be uh, processed right in the beginning. Now, S 3 has an incoming edge from S 4 and it has an incoming edge from S 1. So, S 3 can be processed only after S 1 and S 4 are complete, but S 4 itself can be processed once S 2 and S 1 are complete. So, we have finished code generation for these two. So, in the execution order the vector code will be executed in the sequential order. So, this is uh, S 4 and x i plus 1 equal to g of b i. So, x 2 to 100 equal to g of b 1 to 99. So, this is the vector statement corresponding to this loop this part of the loop and lastly uh, the S 3. So, that would be a 1 to 99 equal to f of x colon 1 to 99. So, this is a very simple you know uh, vectorizable uh, set of loops. So, we just uh, you know emit the code in the topological sort order and automatically it gets done. The second example. So, we have already seen this program before and we also discussed uh, this these dependences. So, from S 1 to S 2 there is a dependence delta equal to and less than and from S 2 to S 1 there is another dependence with delta less than or equal to. So, this is a cyclic uh, graph and therefore, the uh, loops cannot be vectorized. Okay. So, i and j loops cannot be vectorized. Of course, it is always possible to vectorize the k and l loops separately that is never an issue. So, now the we actually try to run the uh, i loop let us say in sequential mode. So, i equal to 1 to 100 right. So, we run the loop in sequential mode. Now, the dependences corresponding to i will all be satisfied. We can take out the i part from this dependence diagram. So, here for example, so this less than this is equal to and less than. So, the equal to part can be taken out and in this case this less than is automatically satisfied and uh, equal to is never a threat for uh, vectorization. So, we can remove this arc completely. So, that is uh, what we have done here. So, between this and this so you know so this uh, this uh, the equal to arose uh, uh, because of uh, the second component right. But uh, when vectorization is performed, we are going to actually you know uh, 
actually read this entire uh, vector and then make the assignment. So, here also we are going to read the entire vector and then make the assignment. So, because of that the vectorization of uh, the j loop is also possible. So, the i loop dependences are satisfied the j loop dependences change as before. So, we first uh, emit the vector code for s 1 and then emit the vector code for uh, s 2. So, automatically this is these are the two vector statements inside the i loop. Okay. So, these are executed sequentially. So, x i comma 2 to 1 0 1 comma 1 to 100 equal to a i 1 to 100 and uh, 1 to 100. So, let us go back to the dependence uh, diagram here. So, we are running the i loop in sequential mode. So, these are all going to be run first and then these etcetera etcetera and the j part is uh, you know uh, vectorized. Okay. So, that is that is precisely what we are doing. So, this dependency is from this s 1 to s 2 since all the vectors you know in the vector code all the s 1 statements are executed first and then the s 2 statements this particular dependence will always be taken care of. So, that is what uh, we have shown here. So, the x statement is run s 1 is completed and only then s 2 begins. So, automatically the dependence will be taken care of uh, for this iteration for this uh, particular two variables x and x. So, there is also a statement here that uh, the j loop cannot be parallelized. So, that is true the reason being uh, the direction vector component is less than here, but uh, it is less equal to for the i loop in this particular edge. So, what we really uh, you know mentioned in the observations is that if the uh, corresponding loop or direction vector component is less than in all of the edges then you know sequentially running that particular loop will satisfy all the dependences inwards, but in this case we have equal to here and uh, less than here. So, even if we run the i loop in sequential mode the j loop cannot be uh, run in parallel mode, okay. but the k and loop uh, k and l loops can always be parallelized. So, assuming that uh, we run i and j in sequential mode then this particular uh, part k loop can always be and the l loop these two can be uh, vectorized uh, you know, and uh, run even uh, parallelly if necessary, but that is not advisable we will see why later. Okay. So, here is the example of uh, the code which is uh, slightly changed. Okay. So, the previous one we had uh, you know the dependence uh, in a slightly different fashion. So, for example, the dependence ran from here to here and here to here, okay. whereas uh, here the dependences are slightly different. So, even the code is different. So, this is x i j plus 1 k a i j k and here it is a i plus 1 j l and x i j l whereas, uh, in this case it is i j plus 1 k and a i j k a i plus 1 j plus 1 l. So, it is not j anymore. Okay. So, what happens is uh, the dependence is not from here to this, but uh, it is from here to the next one all right. This dependence is as before. So, it is still delta equal to and uh, less than, but uh, this particular dependence is from uh, i equal to 1 to i equal to 2. So, that is uh, less than again and uh, here we have j equal to 1 and it is uh, j equal to 2. So, again this will also be less than. So, we have delta less than less than for s 2 to s 1 and we have uh, delta equal to and less than for uh, this particular edge. Now, the dependences have changed. Now, it is possible to interchange the i and j loops. Okay. So, there are tests for conditions for uh, loop interchange in this case they are satisfied. So, it is possible to interchange the i and j loops in other words the j loop runs first and then the i loop runs. 
if that happens or obviously, the dependence direction vector components also get swapped. So, this becomes a delta less than equal to and this of course, remains as delta less than less than. Now, both the uh, you know edges have delta less than in the for the outer loop. So, that this would be the j loop and this would be the i loop right. So, therefore, so we have the j loop and the i loop the dependences uh, you know even though they remain the same the it is possible to now run the j loop in parallel mode ok. So, whereas, the uh, uh, sorry the j loop can be run in a sequential mode. So, if we do that then uh, you know uh, the dependences of all the nested loops inside will be satisfied. So, in other words if we run the outer loop which is j in sequential mode then the i loop can be run in uh, parallel mode. So, that is the advantage that we have. <coughs> okay. So, that is about uh, you know uh, that is one of the examples that we have for concurrentization. So, we run the outer loop in sequential mode, but then we can run the inner loop i loop in parallel mode. This is always advantageous because the inner loop being bigger the amount of work for each thread will increase whereas, uh, if we had actually run the outer loop in uh, uh, you know if we simply say that okay, uh, the inner loop has very little work then uh, making it into a thread is of not much use. Okay. Here are more examples of uh, concurrentization we have i equal to 2 to n here and we have uh, j equal to 2 to n here right and we have s 1 and s 2 here. So, in this case again when we expand the loop i equal to 1 i equal to 2 and we have j equal to 1 j equal to 2 and j equal to 3 right. So, we have a 2 2 a 1 1 here a 2 3 a 1 2 here a 2 4 a 1 3 here and on this side we have a 3 2 a 2 1 and uh, a 3 3 and uh, a 2 2. So, a 2 2 is being used here and it is being uh, defined here. So, there are many uh, you know dependences here right. So, uh, for example, we have uh, you know a 2 2 here. So, s 1 delta less than less than s 2. So, from s 1 to s 2 there is a delta and uh, that is a flow dependence s 1 to s 2 and then it is less than less than. So, this is i equal to 1 and j equal to 1 and this is again i equal to 2 and j equal to 2. In both cases the i equal to 2 is more than i equal to 1 and j equal to 2 is more than j equal to 1. So, this dependence uh, corresponds to that. Okay. Then we have uh, another one s 1 delta bar equal to equal to s 2. So, that corresponds to this b i j. Okay. So, I have not shown it here, but uh, that is easy to see this is b i j and this is b i j. So, there is a usage and then there is a definition. The third one is also an anti dependence s 2 delta bar equal to equal to s 2. So, there is b i j here and uh, b i j here as well. So, this is the usage and then this is the definition. So, there is an anti dependence from S 2 to S 2 as well. So, these are the three dependences in this loop. Now, the you know so the in this case for example, if we i loop can be the, so this is the true dependence right the other two are anti dependences and uh, that is not of much uh, importance to us. So, if we run the outer loop in sequential mode, so that is the i loop right, then the j loop can be run in uh, parallel mode. So, that is uh, an advantage here. So, we can run this in uh, serial mode and then we can run this in parallel mode. So, obviously, this will be satisfied. Okay. Then the second example of uh, concurrency, so we have i loop here and the j loop here. So, we have s 1 delta equal to less than s 2. So, again uh, you know 
So, we have a 2 2 here and uh, a 2 2 here. So, it is the same value of i, but different values of j. So, that is why this is correct. Then we have s 1 delta bar equal to equal to s 2. So, that is uh, this b i j okay. and then of course, s 2 delta bar equal to equal to s 2 is corresponding to these two okay, these three. Now, the j loop cannot be run in uh, parallel mode, but however, the i loop can be definitely run in parallel mode. So, even here you know we cannot run the i loop uh, or the j loop in parallel mode. So, that is why we resort to this sort of a thing. Whereas, here we have equal to as the uh, component for uh, this, this and this all three. Okay. So, the loop can be definitely run in uh, parallel mode, but the j loop cannot be, the, but that is perfectly okay because running the uh, j loop in sequential mode gives us uh, a lot of work for each iteration. Okay. So, whereas, here we had run i in um, sequential mode and then we were trying to run j in um, parallel mode. So, if we do that then the amount of work for the j loop is a little less compared to compared to this. As it is you know if the j loop is big enough then it could be run in parallel mode with enough work. But otherwise, if the j loop has little work, then it is not a good idea to run it in parallel mode. Now, let us look at a couple of uh, transformations which can increase the parallelism. There are many of these, for example, recurrence breaking or cycle breaking, there are uh, ignorable cycles, then scalar expansion, scalar renaming, node splitting threshold detection and index set splitting if conversion etcetera etcetera. So, we are going to look at only a few of these to understand uh, what goes on. Then we have loop interchanging, loop fusion and loop fusion. Scalar expansion for example, we have a scalar in the loop t here and uh, t here right. If you look at the uh, dependence diagram of this particular uh, program, then we have uh, you know uh, S 1, S 2 and uh, S 3 here right. From S 1 to S 2 there is a delta bar. So, from S 1 to S 2, so that is this a i right and then uh, there is uh, from S 1 to S 3 there is delta equal to. So, that is between this t and this t. Right, and then uh, between uh, S2 and S3, there is again uh, delta bar. So S2 and S3, so that is this part, right? And then from S3 to S1, there is uh, delta less than bar. So that is uh, from here to here. Uh, that is uh, we are using it here and then um, you know defining it there. And finally, there is a self loop delta less than O on S1. So, that corresponds to this t. So, we write into the same location again and again. So, the iteration i equal to 1 must write into t and only then the iteration number 2 can write into t. So, this is an output dependence on t on for s 1 and uh, since the statement is the same we actually have uh, a self loop and obviously, it is less than because uh, the I, I iteration numbers keep increasing. This is obviously a cyclic group, right? This, this, and this. There is a cycle. Suppose we make t, you know, into a vector. That is the scalar expansion. Scalar is expanded into a vector. So we have t x of i equal to a i, a i equal to b i, and b i equal to t x of i. So if we do that, then obviously the uh, loop goes away, right? So this loop is gone. And we have from S1 to S2 that is very you know that is this right, and we also have from S2 to S3, so that is also there, and we have from S1 to S3, this is S1, this is S3. So, this is a uh, flow dependence, rest of the dependences vanish. Okay. So, now this particular uh, uh, data dependence diagram is uh, cycle free. So, we can vectorize it using topological sort. So, we do this first, then this, and then this. Okay. So, we can very simply execute uh, uh, rather emit the parallel co uh, vector code for this. 
The other possibility is if we are running it on multi core processors, we can actually make this stem t okay, into a private variable separate for each core. Okay. So, assume that each iteration runs on a different core. So, for each core we have a space little bit of memory space available. So, we make it a private variable for each iteration. So, then again this becomes uh, a cycle free you know just like this okay. there is no cycle here and uh, all the dependencies are within the same iteration. So, we can easily parallelize this particular loop as well. Scalar expansion may not be always uh, profitable. So, if you consider this program we have t equal to t plus a i plus a i plus 2 and a i equal to t. So, this is a cyclic uh, graph right there are many dependences. So, you know so we have a dependence from s 1 to s 1 we have a dependence from s 1 to s 2 then we have uh, 1 from s 1 to s 2 for this and then we have uh, again you know uh, this uh, a i plus 2 to a i right. So, there are many many and of course, 1 on s 1 to s 1 itself. So, there are so many of these dependences here and it is a cyclic uh, DDG, but making the temporary t into a, a vector actually still retains this as a cyclic uh, data dependence graph. So, it does not change it at all you know from so the couple of them removed. So, this is gone right, but uh, this remains there is no change because of this. Okay. So, because of this there is uh, this remains and then uh, we also have a cycle from here to you know here to he, uh, this and, and this again right. So, this is this to this there is no cycle, but uh, we have a cycle right here this is still uh, cyclic. Okay. So, we got rid of uh, one of them uh, this particular thing we got rid of right and uh, we also got rid of uh, this to this but uh, this cycle still remains. So, cyclic uh, data dependence graph cannot be vectorized. We will have to do this sequentially and then vectorize the rest of them otherwise uh, we need to run it sequentially. So, scalar renaming tries to you know uh, remove anti and uh, output dependences. So, here we have t equal to a i plus d i b i then we again use t equal to d i plus d i star b i. So, if we introduce a separate variable for each of these, so they become t 1 and t 2. So, the output dependence between s 1 and s 3 now goes away the ok. Now, you know we can vectorize this code. So, there is no problem we removed the by renaming the scalar uh, t and making it uh, separate t 1 and t 2 we have eliminated the uh, you know output dependence and now the vector this can be uh, vectorized. Okay. So, uh, that can that is easy to see because this t 1 does not have any dependence on it. Okay. So, now uh, this this is a i here and here is uh, a i plus uh, 2, but uh, we are not actually executing this particular code in concurrent mode we execute s 3 then s 4 then s 1 and then s 2. So, automatically we compute here and then uh, use it in s 1. So, compute in s 4 and then uh, use it in uh, s 1. So, that is automatically taken care of. Then we have uh, compute in s 3 and use in s 4. So, compute in s 3 and use in s 4 that is also taken care of. And then we have uh, compute in s 1 and use in s 2. So, that is also taken care of right. So, in this manner we can um, parallel uh, you know make this code run in vector fashion. So, we had looked at if conversion a little before now if conversion is also a way uh, to assist in vectorization okay, and of course, uh, concurrentization. Here we have a program i equal to 1 to 100 if a i less than or equal to 0 then continue a i equal to b i plus 3 otherwise. So, in this case if conversion says you know if this is a conditional statement. So, there is no way we can make it a, a vector code. So, what we do is we introduce a vector condition 
for a i less than or equal to 0. So, b r of i equal to a i less than or equal to 0. So, this is a vector of conditions and uh, we make this you know change the program by uh, saying if not of b r i then a i equal to b i plus 3. So, instead of continue we made it like this and now assuming that there is a masking operation available in vector machines the masking says wherever uh, the mask is true execute uh, the statement and wherever it is false do not execute it. So, we compute the mask as before then we have uh, where this is in vector mode. Okay. So, instead of this now this was still in a sequential loop. So, now we made a vector of uh, the conditions and then we said where not of b r 1 to n a 1 to n equal to b 1 to n plus 3. So, we have actually introduced this masking statement and this is still a vector code. So, this is the advantage uh, you know if we use if conversion all the control dependence because of the if then else condition uh, is automatically translated to uh, converted to data dependence here. Then we have uh, another example with s 1, s 2, s 3, s 4 inside a loop. So, we have an if, the if then and then uh, there are two st you know there is a statement c i equal to c i plus uh, a i and then uh, we have another statement d of i plus 1 equal to d i plus 1 plus 1 and if. So, there are two statements here within the uh, uh, condition and there is one statement outside the condition. So, if you draw the dependence diagram now there is uh, s 1 then s 2 they do not have any uh, you know uh, dependences on them. Now, there is S 3. So, S 3 is uh, actually dependent on S 2 in by a condition. So, that is why it is shown as a C and there is a dependence from S 1 to S 3 as well. So, that is because we are using A i here compute it here and uh, use it here. Then we have uh, a you know a dependence from S 2 to S 4 which is again conditional just like S 2 to S 3 was a conditional dependence this is also a conditional dependence. And then we have a uh, dependence from S 4 to S 1. So, that is because uh, we are computing d i here and using it here. Okay. So, that these are the various uh, dependences. Now, you know we can actually emit vector code corresponding to this so, what we do is uh, we uh, for i equal to 1 to n right. So, uh, sorry this uh, i loop actually uh, this uh, should be removed okay. this is a minor mistake there is no loop here this is uh, basically a vector code. Okay. So, temp 1 to n is equal to b 1 to n greater than 0. So, that is what we compute as the condition that is a vector. And then we have a masked uh, execution where temp 1 to n d 2 uh, you know uh, colon n plus 1 equal to d 2 colon n plus 1 plus 1. So, we execute the second statement as a mask statement. So, what we have really done is uh, we have executed uh, the mask statement first. Okay. So, that is uh, S 2 and then we have executed the S 4 statement because S 1 is dependent on it. So, that is a conditional uh, masked statement. Then we execute uh, S 1. So, which is an unconditional statement and then we execute S 3 which is again a conditional statement. So, this statement is again conditional. So, the order in which this is being executed is the topological sort. So, first S 3 then S 4 okay, then S 1 and finally, S 3. So, this is the execution order and uh, this is the execution order for the vector code. So, just omit this i equal to 1 because uh, there is no loop there. Okay. Loop interchange is another very important uh, transformation. So, for machines with uh, vector instructions inner loops are preferable for vectorization and uh, we can use a loop interchange to enable this. For multi core and multi processor machines parallel loops are uh, preferred to be you know parallel outer loops are preferred. So, again loop interchange may be able to achieve this. There are very simple conditions for loop interchange to be possible 
of course, L 1 and S 2 must be tightly nested no statements between the loops and then the loop limits of S 2 must be invariant in L 1. So, we cannot have uh, i equal to 1 to n and the second one saying j equal to uh, i and then something else okay, i to something that cannot be done. Then uh, most important is there are no statements S v and w in L 1 with a dependence of S v delta star less than greater than S w delta star says it could be any of the dependence less than you know either uh, uh, true anti or output. So, if we have uh, S v delta star S w with less than and greater than then if we interchange the loops this greater than would become the first component which is meaningless that is the reason why uh, such loops cannot be interchanged. So, this is uh, very simple these two loops and this statement the dependence is yes delta equal to less than equal yes. So, interchanging is possible ok. The i loop uh, cannot be vectorized. So, now you know we interchange the two loops j runs outside and i runs uh, uh, inside. Now, the inner loop is uh, definitely as, uh, you know vectorizable sorry here j loop could not be vectorized and uh, i became the inner loop. So, now we can vectorize the inner loop. So, the dependences have also become dependence direction vectors have changed you can observe that here. So, this is the vector code that corresponds to this particular thing. So, we run the outer loop in sequential mode and now the inner loop runs in vector mode. Again here the outer loop is not parallelizable because we have a less than. So, we want to exchange these two once we exchange it it becomes equal to and now there is more work per thread because i loop will be now be run in uh, sequential mode and the j loop will be run in parallel mode. So, this is how each thread will now run a loop ok. So, that is how it runs. So, if, if you look at the uh, diagrams for uh, dependences let us say this is the these are the various instances of statements for i equal to j equal to different values. So, and uh, let us say these are the dependences in uh, black ok. So, if we were running the loop in this fashion to begin with now loop interchange will run them in this order right. So, you can see that uh, with this type of a dependence there is no violation of uh, any of these dependences ok that is what is most important if the loop interchange has to be legal. Whereas, if we have something like this then you know uh, running it uh, in this fashion will satisfy the dependence of this kind ok from S 1 2 to S 2 1. But if we run it in this fashion this runs before this. So, the dependence is violated. So, any of these backward dependences are going to be violated if there is a uh, loop interchange with loops of this kind. In some cases we have uh, dependences in both directions right rectangular. Now, loop interchange is legal, but obviously, it does not give you any benefit because we cannot uh, you know run any loop in parallel when there are dependences in both directions ok. So, that is the example for loop interchange being possible, but with no benefit. Now, loop fission is something which says ok the whole loop may not be vectorized uh, vectorizable. So, divide the loop into smaller loops now this loop is vectorizable, but this is not, but still the program speeds up a little bit because this loop becomes uh, vectorizable this is loop fission ok. So, we divide the loop into two parts. So, in this case for example, there is a dependence from S 3 to S 2 you can see that S 3 to S 2 ok. So, we have C i here and C i plus 1 here. So, we compute here and use here. So, if we break the loop here make these two into one loop and S 3 into another loop obviously, this dependence will be violated. We cannot really compute something in the S 3 and then use it in S 2 because they have become in separate loops. Whereas, in this case all the dependences are in the forward direction ok. So, we can break the loop either here or here or both places. So, in other words we can make three loops out of these three statements and still there is going to be no violation of uh, any of these uh, conditions. 
So, that brings us to the end of the lecture and the end of the course as well. Thank you.